I am president of a guild to which I have been greatly devoted. Well, isn't it true, Mr. Lavery, that the Screenwriters Guild is the one big writer's organization or union? We are, the the we are the only one. We're the recognized bargaining agency in Los Angeles this year. Oh, I'm sorry, the subcommittee. Now, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, and this will, as a student of constitutional law, whether the committee does have the authority to demand it of me, but let me break the suspense immediately and tell you. I am not a communist. I never have been. I don't intend to be. I will make open confession and admit that I am a Democrat who in my youth was a Republican. And uh, if the committee wants to know why I changed from Republican to Democrat... No, we're not interested in whether you, what made you change. All right, Mr. Stripling. Go ahead, Mr. Stripling. Start the question. Writer's Guild. Stripling, I've said many times, I make it as a general assumption, that there are probably communists in the Screenwriters Guild. I can't particularize that assumption as to individuals, but uh, I'm willing to make the assumption generally that I think there are communists in the Screenwriters Guild. Uh, what influence do you think that they exert within the Guild? Well, Mr. Stripling, I think it's uh, not half as much as they make out. I think that our Screenwriters Guild is not much different from most guilds, <coughs> most unions in this country. Uh, it has what this committee would probably consider extreme left. It has extreme right. Great rank and file of membership, what I call liberal center. And uh, like any guild, we have our discussions. We try to keep them in the family. We try to solve them in the family. And uh, as long as we can, I think we keep our guild on a good even keel. Uh, my only concern with respect to this whole proceeding, Mr. Chairman, is merely that uh, people might go back home and think that they've been political martyrs and that a, an election in November, which is coming up in our Screenwriters Guild, might be seriously affected, and not for the better. Uh, if people thought that perhaps government had interfered any more than was necessary in the normal operations of the Guild, I think our Guild uh, has been competent in the past and is competent now. Uh, to manage its own affairs, to keep a definitely American order of things, and uh, to do well by the country and by its own guild. Are you? Are you? Who have been here uh, in the last three days? What influence do they exercise in the guild? Mr. Stripling, I say they do not have control of the guild. And if they did have control of the guild, I would have stayed home long ago. Did they ever have control of the guild? Not while I've been president. Uh, did Mr. Trump know he was the editor of the official organ of the guild? Yes, that's true. But I think the... I think some of these others have held some prominent positions in the guild. Yes, but uh, we are a guild of many, many members, Mr. Stribling. 937 or 931 active members. You've mentioned the names of perhaps... I, I don't think in a group of writers it's possible for them to get away with it. Have you ever tried to organize a group of writers to do anything? Mr. Hoover, the FBI. Mr. Hoover says he thinks it would be bad policy to outlaw the Communist Party and to drive it underground. I think so, too. I think that uh, under our existing contract with the producers and our existing constitution, it would be next to impossible for us to remove anybody from our guild for political belief, private political belief, or action. In our guild, I have said many times that if any individual members are guilty of indictable offenses, that are clearly sedition or treason. Uh, let a proper complaint be brought to the FBI and indictment sought in the federal grand jury and action taken accordingly. But short of that, particularly in time of peace, it would seem disastrous for a guild to attempt to project a standard of conduct not yet embodied into law by the Congress of the United States. The party, or do you consider them to be the agents of a foreign principle? Mr. Stripling, like many Americans, I'm confused. I don't know. I don't know. I will say quite frankly that as an American, uh, I like my country. I don't think I'd like a party that was devoted to the, uh, a foreign power or that was an agent of a foreign power. I think the basic difficulty is that it's a demonstrable point in each individual case. If a man is an unregistered agent of a foreign power, and I think he ought to be indicted and tried for 
and that's appropriate under the federal law. But to make the general observation, I don't know. Perhaps it is. I haven't the access to the information. Uh, well, just, for example, just a minute.